How y'all doing? If you haven't seen my most recent video, then let me tell you a little bit about what I'm doing for this channel. So I'm gonna be revamping it to make it more me. So if you're into sustainable living and fashion makeup and content creating and influencing, then this is the channel for you. For today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how I hand sew and how I alter clothing to make it work for me. Okay. <laughs> Oh my gosh, thank you. You like my shirt? I do too. Detroit Rebel Dogs is an amazing organization based here in Detroit that rescues stray dogs off the streets. Their mission is to aid dogs with rescue, rehabilitation, and rehoming through fostering and adoption. So if you live in Southeast Michigan, hit them up to foster and adopt. Also, you can just buy their merch like this and that goes directly to the dogs to support them. I would like to say this is not sponsored by Rebel Dogs Detroit. They're just amazing and you should go support them. And I have their link in the description as well. So a few weeks ago I was thrifting and I happened to find this super cute halter style top. You might be able to tell it is quite cheap and that is because it is from H&M. So I've been thrifting for four, five years now, but I haven't really gotten into it until like the past two-ish years. Since I really started to get into it, I've noticed that probably a third of the clothing items that I see are from fast fashion brands like Shein, H&M, Forever 21. One of the main reasons that we all keep seeing this stuff in secondhand shops is because of all the trend following and overconsumption that fast fashion brands push on us. So everyone donates their stuff because it's not in trend anymore. That leads me to my next thing. I've also recently seen a ton of fast fashion TikToks and reels and videos like that of people showing off their cute little outfits for a night out on the town and say they got a pair of heels from Shein. And then at the end of the video, the heels are not on the shoe. That is because fast fashion brands produce these items in such a low quality way that makes it fall apart after the first wear. So then you go buy more and that leads to more overconsumption. But that is precisely what the brands want to happen to your clothing so that way you go back to their stores and websites and you purchase more from them and it's just a closed circle at that point so when people are donating their fast fashion items to donation centers and secondhand stores obviously the employees are going through to see what will make it onto the racks and what won't but about two-thirds of what you donate doesn't actually end up on the racks especially if you're donating fast fashion. That will go directly to landfills and... Yup! And so this is a perfect example of a fast fashion piece that I found thrifting and I'm gonna give it a second life. So it'll last longer, I can keep wearing it, and it won't end up in a landfill anytime soon. this top is so cheap and thin, my sister had the wonderful idea to add an inner layer on the inside with more white fabric so that way it isn't see-through and I don't have to wear something else underneath this. This is from H&M.com from their sustainable line. The only trend worth following, recycling and repairing. So I was very curious about H&M's sustainable line. If you didn't know, yes, H&M is fast fashion, but they also have a sustainable line. So I was really curious about it because I didn't know too much about it. So I went to their website and I just want to read you this quote that I found. To make a sustainable future possible, we support companies like Renew Cell, Born Again, Amber Cycle, and Infinite Fiber, innovators who are just as eager as we are to change fashion. We also encourage out-of-the-box ideas to support climate-positive fashion. An innovation that we're really proud to be a part of is Loop, the world's first in-store recycling system, turning old clothes into new ones. 
It was installed in one of our Stockholm stores in 2020 and their website um, was updated last month. So, okay. Like, is it just me or does it seem like we're doing a whole lot of nothing? Like, that would be an interesting like video or like post topic of like exposing all these weird like, like probably money laundering brands. Is that for the thumbnail? <laughs> so as I looked into their website even more, they just had a lot of very basic facts and stuff about how you, the consumer, can be more green. Um, they never actually said how they are doing that, which is interesting. But yeah, their website gives you a bunch of stuff that you can do to stay green, but I don't know how they're, how did they word this? climate positive fashion. H&M produces roughly 3 billion garments each year and their net worth as of last year was $12.7 billion. So if a brand that big wants to do that much, why aren't you doing it? Um, but yeah, if you really want to make your brand sustainable and have eco-conscious views, Maybe focus on how you're sourcing the materials, what materials you're using, how those materials impact the environment when they're being processed and everything. And oh yeah, more importantly, your workers. On their website, it didn't say anything about their workers. It just showed this little thing about, here's what we're doing to make the woman of India money. But I read it and they aren't making anything for H&M. Like they, <laughs> They had this organization that I still believe is running, but um, they provide women in India with basket making jobs, which cool. But what does that have to do with H&M and what does it have to do with making a more sustainable future? I, I don't... What does it have to do with the workers? I don't get it. Because what shops making the clothes? I know. So the H&M headquarters are in Sweden, but their factories are in China, Bangladesh, and India. Again, with those Indian women making baskets, what does that have to do with your workers? Also, another thing that really irks me about brands that claim to be sustainable, they never show proof of it. Like, where's the photos? Where's the videos of your factories, your workers, everything that you're doing? Yeah, so H&M doesn't provide any data as to how they're being sustainable, like their carbon emissions, nothing like that. But the only fact that they do provide is that their sustainable line, which is only one line from the brand, the clothing is made from 60% repurposed cotton, I believe? Okay. My sister just brought up another great point. This video is gonna be longer than I expected, but anyhow, <laughs> cotton is not the most sustainable fabric. It's not even like close to the top, you know? With the research that I have personally done um, regarding sustainable fabrics and whatnot, Modal, it's M-O-D-A-L, it's made from recycled beechwood trees, like driftwood and whatnot. So soft, sustainable, all of that, all the good stuff. But anywho, this video is not about H&M. It is not about those losers. So it's about the shirt. So let's get on to the shirt. So I taught myself how to hand sew a few years ago, but I never really properly learned how to do it until about a year ago. Here's an example of one of the first things that I ever did which isn't bad. So it was this white bralette. This is not white. It was this yellow bralette. And on the inside, you can see there are stains. Can you see all that? Ew. So I got it on clearance with the stains. It was like $3. And I didn't see the stains when I got it. So I got home, I'm like, ew. And then I had this fabric that I could just put on top. So what I did, is I traced out that inner shape and I cut that out and then I hand sewed the pink in. But what I messed up on was adding all of that fabric glue. Can you see that? Rut row. So you're not supposed to do that when sewing clothing items. I know that now. You live and you learn. 
So today I will just be hand sewing with thread and a needle. So I like to sew on the floor. Call me an iPad kid. <laughs> I paint on the floor. I embroider on the floor. Yeah. I'm gonna try my best to explain everything that I'm doing and I will try to get good angles. But this is my first sewing tutorial, so forgive me. So I'm gonna start by turning this top inside out. So that way you can see the seams on the outside and the tags and everything. And I'm gonna start by cutting these tassels off that are used to hang it on a hanger, but I'm not gonna be hanging this up. So those are just gonna get in my way. And I'm also gonna cut off this tag because I don't need washing instructions for this. And these tags as well. Well, the way this top is sewed, this is the front, but it's flipped inside out. So there's that front section, the seam there, and the back, and the other seam. I'm sorry, that was so, that was terrible. I'm just gonna be focusing on the front half, so that is where I'm gonna be putting fabric, not on the back. And the fabric that I'm gonna be using to cover up that front layer is just an old t-shirt that nobody's wearing. And to make this easier for me to see how much fabric I have, I'm just gonna cut along the seams on the side so I can fold it open and see how much that I have. So guys, I'm actually going to change up the DIY. We're making a shirt for Olive. So I was planning on just laying this top on top of the other one and lining up with the neck. But unfortunately, there is a hole in this, so I cannot do that. Instead, I think I'm just gonna cut out that little section and go from there. So I think the easiest way for me to do this is just lining up the seam from the halter top with the edge of this other shirt that I cut. I'm gonna pin it there and pin it all along that front half of the shirt until the seam that goes on the back. So I will not be putting any fabric on the back. Okay, so after 50 minutes of pinning, you can see how toasty my face is. I have finished pinning the entire front half and I was gonna go try it on, but then I realized, girl, your head ain't getting through there. Okay, so now I have trimmed all of the excess fabric that I pinned to the inside front layer of the halter top. So this is the front of the top and I started my thread at the very corner seam right there 
and then I'm gonna follow along on the bottom and just all along where I pinned. This is what it looks like from the back so you can see I still have about an inch from where I pinned it just to give me some leeway when I'm sewing so I don't make any mistakes. And yeah, I'm gonna get to hand sewing. So I'm just about halfway done sewing this top and I thought my thread was getting all messed up, but no. As I'm sewing on this side, on this side the H&M thread is coming undone. So as I repair and repurpose, this deteriorates. sewing the shirt all along the seams everywhere where it's pinned along the collar so now I'm gonna remove the pins and try it on and hopefully hopefully it looks good and then I will trim off that excess fabric that's hanging off the side So here's the top. Now I'm just gonna cut that bit out. So the top is all trimmed up now and I decided why not style it for you guys. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I decided to pair it with my favorite pair of uncomfortable pants that make me look so fabulous. Um, these wonderful flared leopard print jeans, whatever, from Buckle. And then I paired it with these white boots from Forever 21. Disclaimer, I got these shoes probably like four years ago, and these pants a little over a year ago when I was not educated on any of this. So I actually did a pretty good job sewing this, except for that part. That will be a permanent wrinkle because, yeah, I just messed it up. Everything else, like the side, you can still see a little bit overlapping that I have to cut off. And you can see the difference from the back where I did not add any fabric to the front. The back is see-through. <clears throat> the front is not. But yeah, I'm really excited to finally wear this, but unfortunately it is snowing now, so I'll be wearing this indoors. Yeah! But yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you're still watching, thank you! I hope you'll subscribe and like this video because that really helps me out, and it helps more people to see my content. If you're looking for more sustainable tips and tricks and fashion content like this, then you'll want to follow me on Instagram, at kel.sharp, where I post a lot more frequently. And I will also be having a giveaway sometime soon, so it'll be sustainably themed. So yeah, if that intrigues you, then follow my Instagram at kel.sharp. I'm gonna have my link tree in the description along with Detroit Rebel Dogs, so check both of those out. And yeah, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on my next video.